Welcome again to this second of five webcasts on silver. I'm your host, Bradford Cook, founder and CEO of Endeavor Silver. And today we're going to focus on the history of silver as a monetary metal. Now, most of us know gold as the monetary metal. You know, it's, it's the only hard asset you can actually put in your pocket when you're leaving town. Um, unlike real estate, unlike operating businesses, etc. So gold, uh, most people think of as the monetary metal. And there's no question, having moved into a new monetary cycle, uh, that gold is leading the way. However, silver also has a history, quite a long history as a monetary metal. And if you do some research, you'll find that as far back as uh, 2000 years ago, uh, during Greek times and Roman times, silver was used uh, for silver coinage and primarily for trade and colonization of foreign nations. Uh, in to around 260 BC, uh, the Romans minted uh, almost pure silver coin called the denarius coin. And the denarius coin consisted of 95% silver and a little bit of other metals. Uh, it was the primary tool for trade with the colonies all for almost 400 years. But post uh, BC, when you're into, I think what, 200 AD, by the time uh, of the end of the Roman Empire, uh, the denarius coin silver content had declined to 5%. So what does that tell us? In fact, there's quite a, a, enough of uh, the denarius coins uh, in museums today that you can do assays of all these coins th through every era for 400 years and see an almost steady uh, ruler straight decline of the silver content of the denarius coin. At the end of the Roman Empire, there was less than 5% silver in the denarius coin. And the colonies rejected the coin in favor of the tala, which was minted in Slovakia and, and southern uh, Poland. And the tala was pure silver. It replaced the denarius coin. So this is the first example I could find of um, the debasement of a currency. And, you know, we're familiar with this in, in fiat currencies because the purchasing power of the dollar and the euro and the yen declines basically every year. We're, we're, we're so used to this, we don't even think about it. But the first example in history of a government debasing its own currency is the Roman Empire. And in fact, we can actually point at that as one of the reasons for the decline of the Roman Empire. Fast forward to today, and silver in the last 100 years has evolved much more as a strategic industrial metal. It still has its monetary component. In times of uh, financial distress, people definitely go to silver uh, as money, as a store of value, as a currency of exchange, as a hedge against financial distress. Um, but it typically follows gold. And since gold has already moved into a new uh, monetary cycle, uh, silver uh, is surely following. What's new in this day and age, though, is the uh, advent of ETFs, uh, such as the gold and silver ETFs approximately 15 years ago. And there's quite a difference between the two ETFs. If you actually analyze the gold ETF, you'll see that the money flows in and out of the gold ETF pretty much match the broader markets. And so in the 2008 sell-off, the gold ETF got sold off quite heavily. And in the bear market from 2012 to 17, the gold ETF got sold off quite heavily. So it wasn't really being used as a hedge. Uh, it was basically just tracking the other markets. The silver ETFs, however, quite a different story. They basically built almost 700 million ounces of inventory from 2005 to 2012. And barely sold off at all in the multi-year bear market from 2012 to 2017. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the owners of the gold and silver ETFs are actually very different people. Um, it looks like it, the more traders and hedge funds own the gold ETF as a trading instrument uh, because of its massive liquidity, whereas the silver ETF is a store of value. People buy it to put it away. And it's more likely bought by bankers uh, high net wealth individuals, and even Main Street. This year, we have even a much clearer signal with the American retail purchasers of coins and bars, uh, wh who basically disappeared from 2012 to 2017. We've seen a five-fold increase in American demand for coins and bars in the first quarter of 2020. So it does look like investment demand is finally arriving in the silver sector and it will be a main driver of the silver price going forward.